Okay, so let's have a look at um, the test off between Mario and Wario. Both are completing tests in a subject. The first time round, Wario just beats Mario. The second time round, he still just beats him, but it looks like they've both gone backwards, right? The third test, it looks like they've jumped forwards enormously. And on the fourth test, finally, Mario gets to beat Wario, right? But it looks like Wario's gone backwards, and Mario has gone well, he stayed the same, okay, compared to his first test. But that's not the whole story. Tests are not completed in isolation, and this needs to be taken into account when reporting on test results. Okay, so Mario and Wario didn't complete the test in isolation. They competed against 28 other students. Right, so here's a few of these students here. And uh, if you put their, all of their data into a histogram, you get this for test number one, okay? Uh, test number one, data is nicely spread out, so the test is probably a pretty good test. It's got some easier questions people were able to, most people were able to access. It's got some hard questions, which is why uh, nobody scored more than 100%. Okay, and um, we were able to see how well they're doing compared to the group. So with a score of 60 and 61, they're just above the uh, average of the group, right? Test number two, again, seems to be reasonably well spread out, maybe... Uh, not spread quite as much, right? Maybe the average is a little bit lower, so in that case they haven't really gone backwards. Test number three I've put over here for a reason because lots of people scored 100% on that test, so we haven't actually got a proper spread of the data. It's not then going to be that useful for working out how they've done compared to the group or how, uh, how well they've done, because basically the test must have been too easy or there was some kind of uh, outline of questions, some strange question in there which skewed the results like this. So I'm just going to ignore that test. And test number four, again it's a normal distribution, but it's a much tighter distribution. It's not as spread out. right? So how can we use statistics to help us um, describe how well they've done? This is just looking at it visually. Now let's look at some maths. Okay, so this is the bell curve. right? Uh, which is the curve of normal distribution. So you find this coming up in loads of different things, in populations, people, heights, running ability or running speed, for instance. Uh, you'll get, if you get the entire population, you test them, you'll find there's an average, which, uh, and then and then people will deviate from the average by a certain amount, depending on how good or how bad they are compared to the average. Right. So there's a couple of words we use to describe these things. Um, there's something that's been defined as the standard deviation, which you can work out using this formula, but you don't really need to know what the formula is, because on a spreadsheet, all you need to do is write this, and then select the data you want the standard deviation on, and it will give it you. So let's just go back to this bell curve a second. If you're in the middle, right, and you count that as zero, um, if you are one standard deviation above the norm, one whole standard deviation above the norm, so in your running ability, let's say the average 100 meters time is 15 seconds, and you can run it in 13 seconds, you might be one full standard deviation above the norm, right? Which means that you would fall into this top percentage of people, okay? Just on this little corner here. How do you calculate uh, how much faster you'd have to go or what the time would be? If you collect the scores, well, here I've collected the scores in test number one, right? I calculated that the average score was 50 on test number one. Um, and I used the spreadsheet and calculated that the standard deviation was 21, right? So to be one full standard deviation above the norm, right, you'd have to be 21 plus 50, right? So that would be uh, 60, 71, right? So if you've got a score of 71, that would be the equivalent of being one full standard deviation above the norm, right? Um, similarly, I did the same thing for test number two. Test number two, the average score was 43, and the standard deviation was 16. So again, to be one full standard deviation above the norm, you'd have to um, be 43 plus 16, which is 59, I think. Yep, 59. Okay, so to get a score of 59 on test number two, that would have put you there. Okay, so instead of talking about just the numbers on the test, you can talk about where somebody comes in standard deviations, right? So to do that, you take their score, you subtract the uh, average score, the mean, right? 
and then you divide by the standard deviation. This is relatively straightforward to do on a spreadsheet, which I'll show you how to do in a second. Okay, so when we've calculated our z-scores for the data, we can see that Mario was 0.5 roughly, 0.5 roughly, of a standard deviation of, um, above the norm for each of those tests. But on the final test, he's gone up by a whole half of a standard deviation approximately. Okay, so he's improved drastically on this last test. Wario has done pretty well as well, and he has also improved, but the person who's made the most progress, and actually at the end as well, has beat Wario, was Mario, Okay, as we'd expect for our hero. Um, because counting in decimal like this, people find a little bit off-putting at times, um, and a more familiar set of numbers is to go to set the standard deviation to a number you want, right? Since that's just telling me the standard deviation, if I multiply that by 15, for instance, right, and add 100 to the value, then I'll get um, a much more familiar looking pattern of numbers, okay? So that's exactly what's been done here. And this is exactly the same way that IQ scores and CAT tests are reported on. And um, it just gives values which to the delay public or if you're reporting to parents would make more sense maybe. Uh, so you can see Mario again, 107, 106, 100 is the average, right? And uh, you can see he's half a standard deviation above, uh, and then suddenly he's a whole standard deviation above. Wario has pretty much stayed stable throughout, and uh, hasn't fell backwards or hasn't uh, leaped ahead of the group, right? Assuming test 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, and 4 were of increasing difficulty or of increased content demand, then both students are making progress. Okay, so to uh, finish this off, uh, just to show you how to calculate the Z value or the standardized score from some results. Okay, so here's my students, right, the whole of the uh, clan of Mario characters, and the, the tests, and as we said, we ignored test three. What I'm going to do is just insert um, some rows above. So it's above that one, sorry. Right, this is just where I'm going to calculate the uh, standard deviations. Right, so standard div and the average. Right, so average is pretty easy. Equals average. Right, and then I just select all that data. Close the bracket. Okay, so it's returning the average value. And standard deviation, just as easy. Start, there it is, standard deviation. Right, again, just select all the data. Okay, close the bracket. Done. Right, so I've got the average standard deviation. Insert a column right. Okay, so now I could work out the Z value here. So again, equals, I want their test score, minus the average test score, right? Put it in brackets, because I to keep my maths neat. Divide that by the standard deviation, right? Now, I'm just going to insert here the dollar sign, right? Because the dollar sign means when I drag this formula down, I don't want, um, I want it to always select those two boxes, the average and the standard deviation, so it does the same thing to each one, right? So that's my standard deviation for this value. You can see it's got to be right because Baby Luma got 45 on this test, which is below the average. And now it's just reporting that as um, 0.22, minus 0.22 standard deviation, okay? Drag it down, and those are the values. I'll just get rid of some of these decimal places because it looks messy. Uh, and I could so write, excuse the spelling because standardized, probably badly spelt, yeah. Embarrassing, but that's fine. So I, th standardized. If that's not spelled correctly, 
then. That's just life, I'm afraid. Right, so I'm going to take the Z value, multiply by 15. Right, so I'm set my standard deviation so you can see that this person is just below the average of 100 by minus 3.33. But what I'm going to then do is add 100 to that. Right, so the person will be getting add 100, sorry. Right, and again, I'll just set this to get rid of some of these decimal places. So this person got 97, and the average was 100, and they're basically very just below, marginally below the, the um, standard deviations, the, the uh, average value. Sorry. Okay, drag the formula down, and we can see baby boom boom, or boom boom, sorry, was uh, nearly one full standard deviation above. Of course, that's what that's telling us, but this might be a little bit easier for people to understand. Okay, right, I hope you found this video useful. Um, and if you have any comments, suggestions, or criticisms, please do make them, um, and they'll be taken on board and hopefully can be used to modify and, and uh, change the way we're, we're thinking about doing this. Okay, thank you.